Have you ever seen a harvest combine blow so much dust? Welcome to the shop, folks. I know it's a little dark back there, but we'll be pulling this combine out shortly because we're gonna be doing some harvester repairing in today's tractor video. We'll mainly focus on the feeder house of our Kloss Lexion 585R harvest combine behind me. And since we'll have it opened up, I might as well show you how the combine processes our rice crop during harvest. We'll also be repairing roads with the old Cat D7 dozer. We'll be replacing our header's sickle blades. Heck, we'll even try to revive this rat with a little Zach Johnson Millennial Farmer-esque humor. Hey, buddy, are you, uh, you okay? That and a whole lot more is coming up in this episode of Rice Farming TV. Now, before we get started, Happy New Year, and let's do a little recap from the previous couple episodes of Rice Farming TV. Our combines roared through the rice fields as we harvested 1,200 acres of rice. All that grain and straw that was processed through the combines wore down plenty of internal components that we'll get to later. With our crop harvested, we began managing our rice straw, a byproduct that we need to get rid of over the winter before next year's crop. I covered three different methods that help us achieve this. Baling, burning, and burying. I even visited my buddy Joel and his stomper tractor. We got a little muddy. Link to those episodes are down in the description. So our fields are prepped for winter, but what about our harvest equipment? They're tired, dirty, and worn down. So first things first, we're gonna clean them up. The bank outs we hit straight away with the pressure washer, taking off the dirt, dust, and grime. The harvest combines, however, we blow off with an air compressor hoping to remove as much dust, chaff, and straw before we hit it with water. These guys collect an amazing amount of dust over harvest. It really never ends. We get as much chaff and straw off the machine because once water hits it, it just sticks. It never comes off. As soon as we think most of it is off, we start hitting the combine with the pressure washer. Like the bank outs, this helps attack the dirt and grime. Although eventually low pressure water will help run off any remaining pieces of straw. Look at the old John Deere 9660, just flirting at the car wash. Splash me, it says. We're ready to start repairs and replacing the internal wear parts. But first, we need an ace mechanic. Anyone know an ace mechanic? While we wait, we pull out our sickle bar and replace the sickle blades. The sickle bar here is what's on the leading edge of our harvest combine's header. It plus stationary sickle blades are what we cut the rice straw as it's being fed into the combine. They're like the combine's teeth. We replace these teeth every year because they become dull just by cutting so much rice. Compressing rivets are how the sickle blades are fastened onto the sickle bar. The new blades are razor sharp, so watch your paws. Meanwhile, Pops is on his old D7 dozer building up our main road that leads into the equipment yard. Over the years, it's become riddled with potholes and it's begun to slough off into the field. Earlier, he disked the road at the edge of the field to loosen up the dirt, but now he's just backblading from inside the field attempting to build back up the road. Anyone have a road grader? Anyone know where our ace mechanic is? Me, I'm bringing tractors home while waiting for trains. I love waiting for trains. How about this for a Millennial Farmer-esque joke? Oh, hey there, little buddy. You need a hand? Oh, that's a poor choice of words. You okay? Imitation is the best form of flattery. Reflect on that. Talk about reflection. Winter skies are cloudy and beautiful over our flooded fields. The migratory birds are loving it. Hey. There's our old couple, the John Deere 8640 and 7520, fan favorites. They're just chilling, people, hibernating. Are you ready? Ace mechanic Jerry has arrived. Right away, he wants to take off the Kloss Lexion 585R's feeder house. The guy doesn't mess around. Pops mans the forklift, and I, I've got my hands full filming, come on. 
Anyway, the feeder house is essentially the throat of the combine. Once the rice is cut by the sickle blades, it's sent into the feeder house. Inside, a feeder house chain carries the crop into the combine. Today, Jerry wants to replace the entire feeder house chain. Over the past five years, since the last time we replaced it, the chain has become loose and started to wear out. So, we remove it. As we're working on the feeder house, Pops is removing and replacing the hard face caps on the APS drum, or the accelerator drum. The APS drum speeds up the crop and prepares it to be threshed as it moves along further into the combine. It's like the machine's tongue. The caps Pops is replacing have become worn down over the years. And since the feeder house is off, it's easy to reach them, and therefore we decided to replace them, even though it wasn't that critical this year. Hey, where's Jerry going? Yeah, Jerry. He's loading up the new feeder house chain. Here, we're starting to feed the chain back down through the feeder house. Let's take a moment and look at the old worn down grab bars on the old chain. You see, pretty smooth. Now, take a look at our new chain. Nice, sharp angles, a lot beefier, you know? Let's keep feeding the chain. And it's in, but before we pop the feeder house back on, Let's look through the belly of the beast and get a better idea how the harvest combine separates grain from straw. So the sickles cut the crop. The feeder house brings in the crop. The APS or accelerator drum speeds up the crop flow into the machine. Down below and behind the APS drum are pre-grates. Any separated rice can easily fall through and be sent to the grain tank. Meanwhile, the crop flow continues onto the spike tooth cylinder. It's spinning at around 650 RPMs. It's aggressively threshing the rice plant. Here's a side view of the cylinder where you can see a few rows of stationary teeth below. That's the concave. We can raise and lower it, helping the teeth of the concave fit closer to the teeth of the cylinder. This helps strip the rice off the plant. Separated rice can also fall down through the concave and be sent to the grain tank. Behind the spike tooth cylinder, we have now the beater drum or impeller. This flattens out the crop flow and prepares it to be divided in half as the rice is sent into the dual rotor system. Check this out. We have the belts loose, so by hand I can turn the APS drum and you can see the spike tooth cylinder and beater drum all turning in unison. Pretty cool, huh? Now moving to the rear of the combine where you can see the dual rotors. Each rotor spins as the crop flows through. Notice the pucks running down the rotor. They help separate the remaining grain from the plant. It's the last opportunity to collect our crop. The rice kernels fall through those grates and are sent up to the grain tank. As you can see, we have the front two grates off on each side so we can inspect the condition of the rotors. And finally, the straw is spit out from the rotors and is flung down outside the combine where it meets the straw spreaders. They spin rapidly and fling the straw back out into the field. This prevents the straw from just making a large pile behind the combine. And that's it. You've seen the combine in action in my harvest videos. You've seen them moving gracefully through the fields as we're cutting rice. But now you know what's going on inside, through the guts of the machine, as it's digesting the crop, separating the rice from the plant. Pretty cool. Well, we're ready to pop the feeder house back onto the combine. Jerry fires up the forklift and makes a run for it. It's got to slide right in there. And it's in. Good work, Jerry. And we slide the front roller drum into the mouth of the feeder house. Once we've wrapped the feeder house chain around it, Jerry fastens each end of the chain together. And we're done. Well. We also do change and fix a number of other miscellaneous things, including the bearing up in the unloading auger.
Check out Jerry's safety cage that he made out of a depth fluid tote. It's even got a little workbench in there. Jerry's the man. Yeah, this is our post-harvest winter. Our fields are prepped for managing our rice straw and our harvest equipment is being repaired. We'll have everything ready for next year's crop. So everyone, I hope you're having a great start to the 2020 new year. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Rice Farming TV. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Otherwise, I'll see you soon in the next episode. Take care.